Hello, I'm Village President Frank D. Simone, and welcome to Spotlight in Bentonville. Today we'll be speaking with Rick Raddy, the Assistant Director of Public Works, Operations and Maintenance, about Bentonville's Ice and Snow Removal Program. Rick, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Can you tell us a little about the pre-planning that goes into each year's winter programs? Sure. Uh, before every season, um, there's several things that we have to do to make sure our equipment is up um, and ready to go. Um, first, we install all of our material spreaders and we install all the snow plows. Then our fleet division will then go through all those vehicles and make sure that they have proper oil changes, all the chassis are greased, all the plow blades are good, and that they're roadworthy and ready to go before the season starts. Um, we also um, have to update our snow and ice policy uh, plan and make sure that our personnel and driver assignments are all correct for the current year um, and stuff like that. Um, we also need to calibrate every single one of our material spreaders because that's how we determine how much material is being put down at any given time and it also keeps a running total for the end of the year so we know what our salt usage actually is for the season. Um, and then we also have uh, conduct some staff training uh, throughout the year. If there's new technologies or new initiatives, we do that as well. What is the difference between prior winter maintenance to upcoming and current seasons? Uh, prior winter maintenance, um, we had several uh, differences. The, the main differences are the new technologies that have come into play um, in the snow and ice. Uh, snow and ice maintenance, what we are going to be doing this year, is nothing new to the industry. It's about a 10 to 15 years out, old where we're just getting into this stage. But the biggest factor is we used to salt use a lot more salt and we would be plowing a little less and when we did salt we would only do stop bars and mid blocks. Our new philosophies with the new te technologies we're going to have with onboard computers and trying to reduce the alt, uh, salt output is more plowing, less salt and we're going to be able to use liquids which liquids are going to be our newest um, benefit to snow and ice uh, management this year. Is there any special training required for the new snow and ice initiatives and procedures? Yeah, we have uh, done a lot of training with um, our uh, with professional people in the industry that came and uh, did a four-hour presentation to our staff um, with the new technologies and how to use them properly. And we also have the training of the actual new materials and the actual new equipment that we're going to be training on as well. How much snow removal equipment does the village own? The village owns 23 pieces of uh, snow fighting equipment, uh, which most of them are smaller pickup trucks or one tons. Um, but we have five big trucks that are in our five main routes. Um, we do have one front end loader that uses, uh, that we do uh, cul-de-sac cul routes. We have a front end loader that does our municipal buildings uh, lots. And then we have two pickup trucks. One is used for dead ends. One is used for cold um, alleys and then we have one bobcat that is used for our sidewalks. How has the village met the new trends and the technologies, the initiatives in the snow and ice management? Um, the new uh, anti-icing is, is one of the big factors. Anti-icing is a method of actually pre-spraying the roads down before a snow or an ice event. And by doing that, you're using a salt brine liquid with an added carbohydrate to help the, the salt brine stick to the pavement. This is the, one of the newest uh, innovations that we're going to be, ex I'm extremely excited about, um, that we're going to be able to put down before snow. Once this is applied, it is good for up to five to seven days as long as we don't have any rain to wash it off. But that will stay on the roadway during any of that time frame if a snowstorm were to happen or even an ice event, um, which we all know that in the middle of the night between morning time, you can have a quick icing that may occur because of frost. Mm -hmm. By having this down, we would eliminate that from happening. Uh, De-icing is also going to be a method that we can actually use those liquids and actually spray if we do get a snow pack. And that'll help uh, disintegrate that snow and be able to plow that off. Pre-wetting is a, a, a method of adding liquids to salt, which is going to be much beneficial where the salt will be able to use a lot less salt by adding salt brine. Salt is not effective until it actually turns into a liquid state. Mm -hmm. By applying the brine, we have just converted it to a liquid state, so the activation is gonna be instantaneous. Um, ultimately, our whole goal is to have a cost, a chloride reduction, which is environmentally friendly, and then it'll also be a cost reduction to the village with the material that we buy. Thank you for that information. We'll be right back with more Spotlight on Benson.
Water's Edge Aquatic Center is conveniently located in the Redmond Recreational Complex in Bensonville. The Water's Edge is home of Fenton High School and Wahoo swim teams, featuring an indoor eight-lane lap pool and diving well. The Aquatic Center is available for private functions and parties. Learn to swim, stay in shape, or enjoy recreational swimming year-round at the Water's Edge Aquatic Center. The Bensonville Community Library, serving a community of readers. Whether you're old or young, a lover of words, music, or computers, the library has something for you. Check out our new Kindles, toddler jams, story and movie nights, or a variety of other activities offered. For more information, call us at 630-766-4642, or check out our schedule on the web at benlib.org. The Bensonville Community Library, celebrating 50 years of library service. Village President Frank D. Simone, and welcome back to Spotlight on Bentonville. In this episode, we are talking to our guest Rick Raddy, Assistant Director of Public Works, Operations, and Maintenance, about Bentonville's ice and snow removal plan. Welcome back, Rick. Thank you. So, how does the village classify its roadways, and how is the relevant to the snow removal operation? Uh, the village has Public Works staff has actually re uh, classified our roadways as arterials, which, in our, as an example of an arterial road, is going to be York Road, Green Street. Church Road, Foster, Grove, around the, the school, et cetera. Um, and that's gonna be the first streets that we are going to plow. Um, the second uh, area that we are going to plow are called collector streets. Collector streets are streets that go are gonna be taking you to arterial roads. Um, those are such as uh, Hillside, Thomas, Wood Avenue, Memorial, Washington. Um, again, those are gonna take you to the arterials. Uh, thirdly, we do our residential or slash ro local roads, we call them. And again, that's the method of getting from a local road to a collector back to an arterial to where you're going to have a lot more traffic that's going to be uh, taking this, um, having a lot cleaner roads. Um, again, our main focus is to get our motoring public to some sort of an arterial mm -hmm. so they can get to work on time or be able to go shopping and, and things like that. So, What are the jurisdictional responsibilities of non-village roadways? Uh, county Line Road is um, con uh, plowed by the Cook County Highway Department. Uh, Devon Avenue as well as uh, plowed by Cook County Highway Department. You have Grand Avenue and York Road north of Irving Park are conducted by DuPage County Highway Department. Uh, Thorndale Road as well, the new Thorndale Road which is the, the frontage roads are going to be con uh, completed by DuPage County. And then you have Irving Park Road and Route 83 are both all IDOT jurisdictions. Does the village handle sidewalk snow removal? This, uh, the village does handle sidewalk removal. The village plows roughly 12 miles of sidewalk. Um, we have them listed as priorities, a first priority, second and a third. First priorities are definitely around our school zones. The second priorities are along York Road and around our downtown business area. And the priority three is around Irving Park Road. Who is the snow removal supervisor? And what are his or her responsibilities? Uh, most of the time it's going to be myself that's going to be on staff and uh, to manage the operation. I do have three crew, tree, crew, crew chiefs that are also going to be staff, but I can't have them being in, in trucks and trying to find out how everybody's doing. So I'm going to be uh, in a lot myself and my responsibilities are to make sure that we have staffing level, we have the training, we have all of our materials on order, 
and we also monitor weather forecastings for any major changes or anything that may impact our operation. Where can the resident find more information about winter operations? Uh, you can find it on the village's website underneath the Public Works Department and it'll be a snow and ice manual. Uh, you can also contact the Public Works Department, ask for myself or somebody else and we can uh, definitely be able to handle or help you. Before I let you go, every year we get this question, we get a lot of phone calls about it. Why is it that we leave snow in front of people's driveways? That is a question that we uh, would love to answer and I would love Let's to answer, answer it. And uh, there's really no good answer, but I'm going to explain it to the best of my ability. When we're out snow plowing, our plows are always plowed to the curb line. Our policy is to plow curb to curb. If we were to rotate our plows every time we were to go by somebody's driveway, one, we would leave more snow back into the streets that we had just plowed, and two, we would not do a good enough job of cleaning up that curb line. So when we do have snow melt, we need that snow and that water to get to our storm drain so we don't have any ponding and that can have refreeze, which could the refreezes could actually cause accidents and things like that. Thank you for your time. Thank you for explaining to everybody out there how our snow removal works. It's just not a plow pushing snow. There's actually a science to it all. There is very much And a hopefully science. this year with our new technology, it'll be a little easier on you guys because I, I, you guys are out there working hard and I appreciate that. I'm sure the residents appreciate that, but thank you very much for joining us here. Thank you for joining us at home and stay tuned for the next Spotlight on Bensonville.